Welcome back to Learning Solidity. Now in today's tutorial, we're gonna be looking at interacting with the Ethereum network using Java and a framework called the Web3J framework. This is quite similar to previous tutorials where we've looked at JavaScript and its interactions using the Web3 framework, obviously utilizing the RPC. The Web3J framework does it in almost a very similar way. So all you're gonna be doing is interacting with the RPC and in this case, we're gonna start a carry on using Ganache. Um, I've reset my Ganache to basically be a standard installation. Um, I haven't really done anything different with this Ganache from a standard installation. Um, it is the most up-to-date version, which I believe, if I am correct, that is version 1.2.2. Obviously, when this video goes out, that's the current version, but things may have changed. The only thing actually that I've just remembered I did change is to make sure that the port number is 8545, which is the standard RPC port. I noticed when I did an update the other day, it actually used a different port. I can't remember off the top of my head what it was. So you're gonna need a few things to get going with this tutorial. You're gonna need uh, Sulk which is the Solidity compiler uh, and you're going to need the Web3J command line client. Now I'll leave uh, links in the description box down below so do check those out and to get things going um, what you need to do is download the Sulk compiler from the Solidity um, downloads again check my links down below as well as the Web3J command line client. Once you've downloaded both of those, those archives extract them to a whichever directory you'd like to do and then make them accessible from any location on your file system you don't have to but this makes life a lot easier now with linux and mac you could either specify these in your bash.profile or bash.rc whatever you use and in windows you set that you can set them as path variables in your advanced system settings now if you've not done that before you can simply hit the windows key type advanced uh, click view advanced system settings go to environment variables and um, find path in either your user or your system click edit and then add the two directories at the bottom of your list once you've added those, if you kicked up something like, let's make sure I've got a fresh version of PowerShell running. If I now type sulk, I've now got sulk available to me as well as the Web3J client. So now I have those two tools available to me, I can get going. Now, I have created a very basic Java sort of package which I've done using a combination of Gradle and IntelliJ's idea. There is a community edition for this which is free so do check that out. Uh, you can use this without those uh, without um, IntelliJ idea um, but for these tutorials I think it's just a little bit more visual if we do use them and all I've got is those is basically in my settings.gradle um, is the project name and the build file has some very basic instructions. Now from this you can see I'm using Java, I'm using IDEA, I'm using Java 1.8 to build and also um, my source file I'm going to be building to and my source files are going to be based off Java 1.8 and if you're not too sure what a Gradle file is or sort of a Gradle project is more specifically, um, it's essentially a build tool and it's something I've used quite frequently. Um, if you're an experienced Java developer, you probably know about Gradle. If not, you've probably heard about things like Maven and Ant. Again, it's very similar to those. You can simply state a set of instructions which will go and download um, dependencies and build uh, your standard classes or, or archives in certain ways and so forth. It's quite a very versatile, uh, sort of, I'd say it's a continuous integration tool. But I'm not going to go into that too much. So we've got that set up. Now to get things going with our Gradle project, we simply need to navigate to the directory that we're going to be working with today, which in this case for me, it's going to be, I think it's in my documents, uh, GitHub, learning solidity. And this will be tutorial 31, I believe. Now 
If you're a Windows user, you need to use the Gradle w.bat file. If you're a Mac or Linux user, you can use the Gradle w file. Just check that the, that is executable before starting. So what I'm gonna do is find my Gradle w.bat. And by running this, it will download all the dependencies you need. Um, I've already run, um, I've already set this up obviously um, with a Gradle wrapper. That's what the Gradle w is, it's Gradle wrapper. And this basically means you don't need to have Gradle installed locally. And um, the Gradle wrapper just is like um, an attached client more than anything. Uh, this built into your application. So if I run that, it will. What I'll do is go and get all the things I need to run this project. I've actually already run this, and then basically give me the ability to run certain tasks. Now for this, you won't need to do much for now because it's already set up. Now, you might have noticed a couple of things like idea, uh, IDE tasks. Because I'm using IntelliJ, I basically just set this up so the IDE can actually interact with my Gradle project quite easily. As you can see, in IDEA, it gives you full set of um, Gradle tasks to interact with. But again, I'm not gonna go into that. So now we have everything set up, what we're gonna do is look at converting Solidity source code into Java code that's ready to interact with the RPC. Now we have our address book which we've used in the past couple of tutorials where it's just a simple Solidity contract where we can get a list of addresses for our specific address that has a range of aliases set against it. We can also remove addresses from this list as well. So the first thing that we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna to need to convert this address book contract into a binary and an ABI. Now the ABI is the application binary interface, which is just the set of instructions that tells us, for instance, like this address, get addresses method is public. It returns an array of addresses and so forth. And so basically we're just setting up our definitions and our compiled um, Solidity contract. Now to do this, let's just jump back into our PowerShell. Um, I covered the setting up the environment variables um, for the Sulk and the Web3 client so I can show you how to build a address book quite easily. Now you don't have to have set these environment variables up, it will work fine without them. You just remember need to remember to set your paths every time that you basically execute one of these commands. For me, it's gonna be a little easier because I have set them up. So the first thing we're gonna do is compile our Solidity contract into our ABI on our binary. Now to do that, we can simply state sulk. Let's start typing in the right window. So sulk, and then it is our source path. Now what I've done is I've set the Solidity contract to exist in source main resources solidity and then address book dot salt so we're going to do a state sulk then source main uh, resources solidity and then address book dot salt we want to uh, have an output of a binary and also an abi we want to optimize it we don't have to but it's always good to and then we want to set an output directory of source main resources out. Now, if I run that, it should generate me an ABI file and a binary file from my contract. Now we can check that out by either navigating to that directory and checking or go into our IntelliJ and to see if those two files exist and you can see they do the binary is just a load of garbage it's basically a hexadecimal version of your contract but their abi should look a little bit more friendly which is our essentially our definition of our contract okay so we've set those two up now what we need to do is we need to generate some java from those two files. Now we can do this with the web3j command line client by simply setting web3j. We are generating some, so we are using some solidity. We first need to specify our binary, then our ABI file. So let's specify source, main, resources, um, out, 
and then our binary first address book dot bin then again source main resources output address book dot abi now we need to specify an output for our java which is going to just simply source main java and then the final thing that we need to do is specify a package that we're going to be generating for our class now in this case i'm going to be specifying package youtube dot solidity dot learning dot contracts okay so now if i build that hopefully it has generated my smart contract for me but i don't think it did because i missed something there what was i missing so to generate blah 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 so i had so the binary ah I forgot to include the ABI file. No, I did not. Let's have a look what was wrong with this. So we had a binary file, we had our ABI file, we specified an output file with a package. Ah, we forgot to specify the generate keyword. So web3 solidity generate, which should now have generated us our Java file. So now we have a Java representation of our smart contract. So that didn't require us to do any programming for this. It was all generated. And now we can obviously look at trying to interact with it. But I'm not going to do that in this tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm just going to simply show you how to um, access the test RPC from Java. OK, so all I'm going to do is just basically use the web3j framework to get me the current version of the rpc that we're using now to do this all we simply need to state is um, web3j so this is the actual web3j client and we're going to state web3j build we're going to need a http service uh, because web3j or the rpc client runs over a http service we are then going to need um, something that will allow us to obtain the client version. So web3j client version is equal to web3j. And this is essentially the call that we're going to be making to the RPC. So we're going to state web3j client version. And then we're simply going to say send because we're executing something or we're sending something to the RPC we need to issue the send command now it's going to be thrown an exception so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to surround that with a try catch I could add it to the method signature but for this I'm not going to and I need to define that outside of the scope So the next thing what we need to do now is just simply get our current version. So we're going to have a string. Uh, we're going to say the web3 client version string is equal to the web3 client version dot get web3 client version. It may not be initialized, so equal to null. Now, and then we can simply state system out dot print line and then uh, let's just say web3 client version is going to be the web3 client version string now to run this it can be quite straightforward um, when you import a file or import a project to IntelliJ, you can simply click the play button. To import your project, um, which I probably should have covered earlier on in the tutorial, you simply just need to do file, open, oh sorry, let's just start again, file, um, uh, I believe it is, it should pop up as a new project from existing sources, specify your project which in this case it'll be something like uh, documents github learning solidity tutorial 31 this one's already open and um, and then basically it should give you a few um, wizard windows it'll be like um, 
do you want to import this project as X, Y, and Z? Make sure you specify Gradle. Once you've done that, click the box that says use Gradle wrapper. Then if you just press OK, it should import the project just like this, which will allow you to interact with um, the whole of the project like I am. So then when it comes to actually running the application, you can simply state, uh, you right click on the little play button, debug, and then what it'll do is it'll actually execute it. Uh, you basically, you might not be able to see the little window at the bottom, which says the Web3 client version, I don't know if I can zoom in on that, I cannot unfortunately, but it says the Web3 client version is Ethereum JS test RPC v2.2.1 and that is using Ethereum JS. Now that basically means that everything has worked and we are interacting with the RPC on the Ethereum network from Java. Now I'm going to cut it there today because I feel like this might have gone on long enough and in the next tutorial we're going to be looking at deploying our contract as well as loading our contract and also maybe some basic interactions with our contracts functionality. Now I hope you found this useful and I'll catch you next time.